From Port Arthur to Boca Chica, the coastal bend of Texas is full of interesting cities and salty characters forging their own path. They create, they experiment, and they love the humid land they call home. And this couldn't be more true than at today's trippin' destination. Lake Jackson, city of enchantment. episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Lake Jackson, Texas sits about 50 miles due south of Houston and only 15 miles from the beach. It's a unique town. First off, there isn't really a Lake Jackson, just a small oxbow that's separated from the meandering Brazos River. But if you drive the streets, you'll quickly realize that the river ain't the only thing meandering in these parts, and that's by design. So would you believe me if I told you that this town site was built as a master planned utopia back in the 1940s when there was truly nothing else quite like it in the country. And today, Lake Jackson is still a thriving community on the coastal prairie of Texas. Now we're gonna learn more about all of that, but the first question is, do we head this way or is it that way? There are many ways to go. Center way, west way, circle way. It's enough to get you way disoriented. And the reason for these crazy street names goes back to the foundation of this town when it was built to support the workers of Dow Chemical. To learn more, we're stopping into the Lake Jackson Historical Museum. All right, so this is the man behind Lake Jackson, Alden Dow. My father was not only the founder of the Dow Chemical. Oh, Company. hey, I was just about to talk about that. I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna talk over you, okay? All right, so beyond being an incredibly talented architect, Alden was also the son of the founder of Dow Chemical. And his father gave him essentially a blank slate to create the city of his dreams, the city of enchantment. And so Alden thought way outside the box. No grid lines, winding roads, and lots of really strange named streets. Alden shunned conventional wisdom and cookie cutter neighborhoods, opting instead for a modern mid-century feel that's still evident all over town. Without Dow Chemical, there might be no Lake Jackson, but this museum covers more than that. From Karankawa Indians to the harsh realities of the nearby sugarcane plantations, all the way to the world's first stealth aircraft, the Windecker, developed using Dow composite materials. You know, if we had our own plane, we wouldn't have to road trip everywhere. I'd like that. What am I supposed to do? Increase open throttle. Does this have missiles? I don't think it's that kind of plane ship. <laughs> Straight up! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, see? <laughs> I'm back in the air. I made it to heaven. I think that means I beat the game. All right, well that's good, I won. I better uh stick to the ground. And from ground level, down town Lake Jackson is cool. <laughs> See what I did there? It's winding streets full of one-story, mid-century architecture. It's what the 40s thought the future looked like. And Alden Dow's downtown studio is now a national historic landmark. But at this very moment, the only sightseeing I want to do is to see food in front of me. So let's head to this gas station. Well, it used to be a gas station. Now, it's Bodega, a sandwich deli with the side of convenience store. So, I mean, this place was clearly used to be what, an old dentist office or something like that? Well, you could say a, a, a car a car doctor, if you will. Uh, <laughs> this is founding manager, Aubrey. Well, it does seem like a perfect venue when you got the, you know, when it's bright outside, open the big garage doors. Absolutely. It's a great summer spot when the sun's out, it's just open a bay door. We got all the beer and wine selection, excellent menu where, I mean, we're open pretty much well into the night when other places aren't. So it's a really a good place to be at all times. It's awesome. Day. And the main thing that keeps folks flocking back sandwiches. Not those sad cellophane wrap things you find at other gas stations. Oh no, these are culinary works of art. 
and Aubrey is going to show us some of the house favorites, starting with the Reuben, a.k.a. the Kevin. So let's see, we got our rye bread, our toaster is going. It's like, so pastrami is usually uh, bottom round. We do use a brisket cut for that pastrami, Ooh. but it's brined the same way and smoked slow and with care like every other pastrami should be. Yeah, absolutely. Brisket pastrami, that's what's on my mind right now. Oh yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Dude, that's good. I don't know who Kevin is, but I want to hug him. Next up, the Lieutenant Dan with, you guessed it, shrimp, but also sliced apple? We got, we got pickled shrimp, we got apples and shrimp, we got shrimp sandwiches. Apples, shrimp, bacon, jalapeno cheddar bun. That's right. How could this not be delicious? Man, it sounds weird on paper. This is a first for me. Dude, it shouldn't make sense when you, yeah. when you describe it, but it just does. Why have I never had that combo? Oh, man, I'm telling you. Dude, that's good. So Chet, I cannot let you leave without trying one more sandwich. RC Ranch right at the road supplies our Wagyu beef, puts together an excellent meatball sub for you. Wagyu meatball sub. Yes, indeed. Order it right now. So Wagyu beef is prized for its ridiculous amounts of fatty marbling, giving it over the top flavor. Now I love homemade meatballs, and I have a feeling this meatball sub is on a whole nother level. Chet, enjoy. Oh, I will. Oh, I will. Wait, but one more thing. What's that? I saw quite a selection of craft beers back there. Ah, uh, yes. I'm going to need some expertise on one to pair. Let's, let's go take this. All let's right. Let's go take a look. Let's go. Bodega only has about 150 craft beer options, and I'm not exaggerating. So it's good to have an expert. My heart and my head would go towards that watermelon ghost from Brenham, yeah. Watermelon weather. That's right. Hey, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Right. Do enjoy. I, I will. Cheers, y'all. Oh, that's excellent. So for the record, I did not eat all of the first and second sandwiches, just so just so y'all know. Had to save room for this one right here. Ooh, four big old honking meatballs on there, provolone cheese, house-made marinara. Oh my gosh, mm. that meatball is so good. You're almost doing it a disservice putting it on the sandwich. I mean, you could just put that meatball in front of me with a fork and a knife, I'd be a happy, happy man. And what makes it especially awesome is that it's served out of an old gas station and transmission shop, I guess. <laughs> I guess. We're certainly greasing my transmission right now. This will keep me running another 100,000 miles for sure. I think I would live in Lake Jackson just so I could confuse visitors with directions because it would be like, yeah, you go down this way, and then you turn on that way, and then you go past Circle Way, and then like this way and that way. It's hilarious. It reminds me of the Scarecrow in Wizard of Oz. He's like, you go this way, or you go that way. Just don't go the wrong way. Yeah. Well, we're headed right, at least to our next destination. So something that makes the Texas coast special is that it's right in the middle of one of the largest bird migration paths in the Americas putting the Gulf Coast Bird Observatory in a Texan sweet spot. This 34-acre property is a beautiful patch of earth. Boardwalks, marshlands, and dense woods where wildlife, especially birds, can flourish. There's probably species of birds living in this forest that man has never seen with their own eyes. Pro probably not, actually. But it sounds romantic to think about that they're, you know. I guarantee there are some I've never seen, and it's the work of Executive Director Martin Hagney, along with staff and volunteers, to track and observe them all. Our whole purpose is conservation, natural conservation, but especially with birds, finding out how these birds are doing in the wild, also how their habitat is doing, because if they don't have the habitat, they're not going to be able to survive anyhow. And we're not the organization that can fix things, but we can tell the organizations that can fix things what's happening in nature. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Field work, tracking, research, land trusts, even as far away as Latin America. You guys are the protectors of the birds on a global scale. <laughs> well, I don't know global, but you know, at least uh, the Americas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. this morning, uh, our volunteers and our staff here went out and they put up these mist nets so that when a bird flies into it, lands in that pocket, and then you can go catch it. Cool, can we go see? Yeah, let's do it. All right, awesome. We have birds today. We've caught a few birds this morning for our birding program here, and Kay and Robert's gonna show us how that's done. This is hands-on work, 
It doesn't hurt the birds, but gives us a whole lot of information. We weigh it, we measure it, they check it for fat content, for parasites, they make sure it's healthy, and then they put a little band on it so that it can be tracked. If that bird is caught at a different banding station, we get a, an email saying, hey, we caught your bird okay. in wherever, Panama, Chicago, wherever. Birds banded here have been found as far away as Alaska, and these volunteers have delicate hands of steel. Oh, now that's a good get. You okay? Yep, I'm used, I'm used to this. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and they go for the cuticles right here. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. And certain. then they pull. Ow. You've had birds draw blood, Robert? Oh, yes. Yeah. Now this guy was born this spring. It, it's a northern cardinal, and you can tell by the black beak. When they leave the nest, their beaks are this dark colored. And then over the months, it'll turn a bright orange. Got it. And when the work is done, yeah, well, I, I thought he was coming after you, Daniel. The piranha <laughs> of the sky was going to come for, straight for your jugular. Gosh, you know, once you see birds up close like this, how could you not fall in love with them? They're Dude. unbelievable. <laughs> Do you still have feeling left in your finger? Oh, you to go. This next bird holds a special place for me because it shares a name with my daughter. Is this a wren? This is a Carolina wren. So small. This is a, a resident bird here that lives year round on our property. They nest here. And I get the honor of releasing it. I held a rattlesnake once. This should be a little easier, it's right? It's probably a little easier, yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. 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 And just oh my goodness. Open your hand. Look at this. The tiniest little bird. I mean, it weighs practically nothing in my hands. Woo! Go ahead, go, yeah. There it goes. All oh, right. that's awesome. They get a, an hour of their day taken out, and then they're back, and it helps us keep the whole population healthy. We see birds literally everywhere, but do we really appreciate all the color and song they bring to the world? Probably not. So thank you to all those who help keep birds filling the Texas skies. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Now it isn't just the birds of the air that Lake Jackson folk care about, it's also the fish of the sea. So let's stop by Sea Center, Texas, one of our state's most important fish hatcheries and fish museums. All right, so check this out. You see all the fish hanging on the walls? These were all once state record holding fish, meaning it was the biggest of its species ever caught. Now I say at one point because many of these records have been beat, which is absolutely insane because these fish are monsters. And then this one will terrify you on all your beach trips, the Great Hammerhead. About four years ago, one much larger than this was caught in Texas, 14 and a half feet long. I've never caught a fish even close to being worthy of hanging on a wall, because y'all know the sort of fish I catch. It wasn't a whale that ate Jonah, y'all. It was a Warsaw grouper. I could fit one of my children in that mouth easily. You know, you kind of gauge its mouth, you know, like how big's the mouth? I could fit one of my kids in there, yeah. <laughs> the aquarium here is really great and educational, moving from coastal marshes to deep offshore waters. Ooh, cool, check that out. We got some sheep's head. I don't think you know what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure that was a sheep's head because I've tried to catch one of those before and been skunked or sheeped. <laughs> rather. Look at that eel. Isn't that cool? But I think it's dead. Oh, wait. Never mind. The eels are not dead. <laughs> Just in case you thought they were. Note to self never play quiet water, still water with an eel. But some of the other animals are much more active, especially in the touch tank. And luckily, the crab claws have been removed. Like, oh, he's trying though. He thinks he still has a claw. <laughs> this is like Port Arthur this, all over this again. This is hilarious. Even without claws, these critters are hard to catch. He still thinks he has fight in him. These are such strange creatures. Delicious too, but I didn't say that. <laughs> all right, you see the fish back here? Here it comes, look. Okay, so that is a red drum. It's one of the biggest game fish in all of Texas and one of the reasons the sea center here in Lake Jackson is so important. So let's go check it out. It's here that Texas Parks and Wildlife works around the clock to keep Texas Reds running in the water. This is hatchery head honcho Paul Kaysen to give us a tour. So this is one of our brood rooms at Sea Center okay. where we house the adult fish that we spawn to produce fingerlings. So the mamas and the papas. 
Yes, sir. Interesting. And it looks like we're in luck because Jessica's you? here and she's about Great. to feed the fish. All right, so this is a mixture of shrimp, cut up mackerel, squid, and beef liver. So that's what they're about Sounds to get. Good delicious. breakfast for them. Mm. <laughs> Whoa! Get after it like they've never eaten before. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's down to the good parts at the bottom. Suey! These are monster red drums. Yes, sir. I guess that's why they're here. Absolutely. Each one of these tanks contains five fish. They're certainly over five years old, but they could be as old as 40 years old. Redfish lives till 40? They do. Unbelievable. Redfish are one of the big predators of our bay and a highly prized game fish. Texas waters need them to maintain their delicate balance. But fishing takes a serious toll. By controlling the light and temperature in this room, well, these fish can produce a lot of new babies for our Texas water. Evidently, invisible babies. All right, an empty tank. It's not empty, Chet. Take what? a closer look. Uh, it's definitely empty, Paul. There's, there's 400,000 red drum eggs in this tank. I mean, I see some, like, little tiny things. And that's how a red around. fish starts its life. There are literally millions of babies born here every single night, including trout and flounder, Oh, but they grow up so fast. And in just 72 hours, they hatch, turn into larvae, and get dumped into these outdoor ponds, where they'll get bigger and bigger until they're ready to move into our coastal waterways as fingerlings. But lucky for us, some of the fish get kept back for research and to help the next generation of anglers fall in love with fishing. So these ponds are full of bull reds and monster trout. This should be my easiest fishing yet. What's the biggest fish in here, you think? Uh, there's some red drum pushing 40 inches, and there's about a six-foot alligator. <laughs> what do they say about shooting fish in a barrel? Oh, a trout. Oh, that's a big trout, That's a really huh? nice trout. Oh, it's on now. And some may say this is cheating, and sure, yeah, probably. But it's still a blast. In 15 minutes, I've had more luck off of this pier than I've had in multiple trips to the bay. You guys. Keep up the good work. Keep putting fish like this back in the bays and oceans so that uh, we can all go out and catch them. Will do. So thanks for the work. All right, buddy. I'm going to set you free again to get bigger. Adios, amigo. Well, this day is shaping up to be pretty amazing. I might even call it enchanting. What would your kids do if they asked to go to the magical kingdom and instead you took them to the city of enchantment. <laughs> I think you're a little disappointed. <laughs> disappointment is not the right word. My children would not be happy. I don't know why, but every time you say enchantment, I want to do this with my fingers. <laughs> enchantment. Was and it? you hear, you can see the sparkles. I, uh, yeah, enchantment. Look, look, we just put them there. Oh! oh. oh. Whoa! You're an enchanter. Oh. Are you not enchanted? <laughs> Technically, one of the official definitions is filled with delight, charmed. And with our next stop, well, I feel pretty darn delighted because I'm not just gonna catch some fish, I'm gonna scuba with them here at Mammoth Lake. And this is owner Jason Burleson. Welcome to Mammoth Lake. Yeah, this is incredible to see. So uh, a scuba diving lake close to the ocean, but not in the ocean. Exactly. This is wild. Mammoth Lake uh, used to be a sand pit. Uh, at one point, we decided to put a scuba lake out here. We sunk over 169 items for people to dive on. So it's like an underwater scavenger hunt in a way. Exactly. On top of that, we're the largest and deepest in the state of Texas. Seriously? Yes. Wow. The lake got its name because mammoth fossils were found in this pit before it was filled with water. Folks come from all over the country to dive here. And today, it's gonna be me, my producer and dive buddy Todd, and our dive master, Alex. Luckily, they rent just about everything a tripper needs. Daniel, I am your day tripper. No! <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, and she's taking the stairs. Into the depths we go. And the stuff down here is, well, weird. Like a giant caterpillar sculpture. Yeehaw! Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. 
If you ever wondered what happened to some of the rides from Six Flags Astro World, well, a handful of them ended up at the bottom of this lake. Y'all remember the Space Shuttle loop de ride? So many memories almost barfing on this thing. The fish around here are highly suspicious of me. Hey, y'all know a good place to get some sushi? Oh, I think I offended them. And these sunfish are just one species. There's bass, perch, even seven foot long paddlefish, which frankly, I'm afraid to see. Hey, how do you fly this thing? But the coolest of all, this World War II submarine. Boop, boop, beep, boop, 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 beep, boop. It comes complete with torpedoes and a workstation. Oh, uh, this one's for you, Todd. Hello? Batten the hatches, boys, and man the guns. Pew, 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 pew. If you've never scuba dived, well, this place can get you certified, and I highly recommend it. Because underwater, there's a whole nother world of tripping. Fishing, scuba diving, hanging with colorful birds. With all I've done, you might think we're in an exotic island paradise. And you'll really think that after we make our dinner stop to Polly Pop. It's a tiki bar in the most unlikely location. But as soon as you walk in, well, this location just became your vacation. Fruity cocktails and fresh dishes inspired by the Polynesian culture of the South Pacific. This place oozes island vibes and the cocktails are on fire. No, literally. Thank what? you. Can you cheers that or are you going to burn yourself? Well, cheers. cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's excellent. If I was drinking that, my hat would catch on fire. Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jordan Robinson, part of the family that owns this island getaway. What, how do you describe the vibe of Polly Pop? Relaxed and like just an island getaway. Come here and just, you know, have a little different in their day. Yeah, this is the first of its kind here. That's cool, so. that's cool. So what are y'all's most popular dishes? So right now it's the crawfish and we have been voted best crawfish since we opened in 2018. My favorite is the spicy chicken ramen bowl. It is a Thai cuisine that brings like a peanut butter flavor base to it. Our bone broth is 12 hours long. Hey. Yes, and then we include fresh ingredients like broccoli, cabbage, pressed garlic, butter. Okay. Yes, we love butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In an even stranger twist of cultures, tonight is taco night. But I've already decided it's ramen night for me. Oh, aloha. Thank you. <laughs> Here we have the spicy Thai chicken ramen bowl. The noodles, the bone broth. Oh, it smells fantastic. I wish y'all could. I wish y'all were in my position. You could smell this. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's delicious. Ooh. I just got my first kick. They ain't lying when they say spicy Thai bowl. Woo. Woo. The ramen bowl is like a, uh, a soup bowl of surprise because you keep digging down in it and you find little bits of uh, good stuff, like boiled egg. Mm. A little bit of chicken there. And what I love about ramen, one of the things is like, the focus is not just on the ingredients, but it's all about the broth. Broth me, baby. <laughs> broth me. Oh yeah, that is good. Ah. Oh boy. Aloha, baby. Lake Jackson, it's a quirky little town of winding roads and different destinations, but that's what makes day tripping fun, isn't it? This town is cultured, adventurous, passionate about animals, even if they are a little outside the box. And it doesn't matter if you go this way or that way, any way that gets you to Lake Jackson is the right way. <laughs> oh no, I melted my straw. <laughs> You know I had to get the fire drink. So I will see all y'all out on the road. Bye con Dios, amigos. It literally melted my straw. I'm gonna, I'm gonna melt my hat if I try to drink this. It's not bad. I mean, honestly, it's still pretty good. I'm a little scared of it, though. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. 
or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy y'all, Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.